Hello. We're going to study the place called Gaza. What do we know about Gaza? What do we know about Palestine? Israel. Right now there is an Israel-Gaza conflict. But what do Gazans and Palestinians and Jews have in common? Let's look at it from the biblical perspective. Did you know that Jews and Arabs or Muslim speaking Arabs descended from Canaanites? After examining DNA of 93 bodies recovered from archeological sites around the Southern Levant, which is the land of Canaan in the Bible, Researchers have concluded that modern populations of region are descendants of the ancient Canaanites. Most modern Jewish groups and Arabic-speaking groups from the region show at least half of their ancestry as Canaanites, according to our source, biblicalarchaeology.org. Here's another one from the science.org, that Jews... What do they have in common? Jews and Arabs share recent ancestry. They entitled their study, Clashing Groups Are Y Chromosomes Cousins. A new genetic study shows that many Arabs and Jews are closely related. Yes, Arabs and Jews are closely related. More than 70% of Jewish men and half of Arab men whose DNA was studied inherited their Y chromosomes from the same paternal ancestors, Abraham, who lived in the region within the last few thousand years. Here is another one from Harrods.com that Jews and Arabs share genetic link to ancient Canaanites so that most of today's Jewish and Arabic speaking populations share a strong, a strong genetic link to the ancient Canaanite, a study by international team of archeologists and geneticists has found that these modern day groups in Israel, the, the Jews and Arabs in Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, and parts of Syria share a large, part of their ancestry, in most cases, more than half with the people who lived in the Levant during the Bronze Age more than 3,000 years ago. So that historically, until Israel was reestablished as a nation in 1948, Palestine was a term for the territory. Palestine was a term for a territory between the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River. So that the word Palestinian was applied to anyone living in Palestine. As one of the longest continually inhabited places on earth, Palestine region has changed political ownership numerous times and has been the nexus of migration for many different cultures. The modern day Palestinians represent a mixture. The modern day Palestinian represent a mixture of local inhabitants and many other groups of Muslim brought from Bosnia, the Balkans, the Caucasus by the Turks in the 16th to 19th century, from the Sudan, Egypt, Syria, and Lebanon by the Brits in the 20th century. So no wonder what was recorded in the book of Genesis and onwards just tells us that Jews and Arabs share the same paternal genetic links. And we will prove that as we go along. Now, going back to Gaza. Did you know that Gaza, also called Asa, mentioned in the Old Testament, in the New Testament of the scriptures? In Genesis chapter 10, Gaza is one of the oldest cities in history. Gaza is one of the border cities of the ancient biblical Canaan, which is the promised land. Today, 
Gaza is a city located on the border of Israel and Egypt on the south, in the southwestern part of the present day Israel near the Mediterranean Sea. Second, did you know that Gaza was a city associated with ancient Philistine? But who are the Philistine or the Philistines? Let's take a brief look. Philistine comes from the Hebrew word Philistia and the Greek word Palestine, which gives us the mother name Palestine. So that the Philistines are recorded in the list of patriarchal founders of 70 nations that descended from Noah, whose sons are Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So according to Genesis chapter 10, the Philistines came from the Capturites that descended from the descendants of Ham. It is thought that Philistines originated in Kaftur, the Hebrew name for the island of Crete and the whole Aegean region. So that in Amos 9 verse 7, I brought Israel out of Egypt and I also brought the Philistines from Crete and led the Arameans out of Kir. Jeremiah 47 4, the time has come for the Philistines to be destroyed. And yes, the Lord is destroying the remnant of Philistines, those colonists from the island of Crete. Another one. For unknown reasons, the Philistines migrated from the island of Crete to the Mediterranean coast near Gaza, the present day Gaza. The ancient Philistines have traveled to Canaan from a coastal originally called Crete. Because of their maritime history, the Philistines are associated oftenly with the sea people. The scripture records Philistines had also in contact with Abraham and Isaac. Genesis 21 records that Abraham lived as a foreigner in the Philistine country for a long time. And so Isaac also moved to the place according to Genesis 26. Didn't you know that also the Philistines are people who held the great festival and offerings and praising to their god Dagon, which, is, which brings to us that Philistines it, believes in a pagan god and they have a name, Dagon. A similar thing also in Deuteronomy 2, that Crete invaded and destroyed the Abites, the Philistines, who had lived in the village in the area of Gaza. There goes the association of Gaza to the ancient Philistines, Abraham and Isaac. Now let's look at the connection of Gaza associated with Joshua. But who is Joshua? Joshua is Moses' second in command who takes over and leads the Israelites into the promised land, Canaan, after Moses' death. Joshua led the Israelites seven years conquering the promised land, one nation after the other. So that during the time of Joshua, Joshua conquered the land from Kadesh Barnea to Gaza and to the whole region of Goshen. So that in this situation, you will see that Gaza is not just today. Gaza has been there since Genesis, since the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Joshua. Why? Joshua conquered all this kings and their lands in a single campaign, including Gaza, because God, the God of Israel, the God of Isaac and Abraham and Moses, was fighting for his people. Not only Gaza is associated with the Philistine, Abraham, Isaac, Joshua, but he is, Gaza is also associated with the Old Testament character named Samson. During the time of Samson, the Philistines were living in Gaza, were controlling Gaza. So one day Samson went to the Philistines in the town of Gaza and he spent the night with what? With a prostitute named Delilah. 
So after Delilah tricked Samson into divulging the secret of his strength, the Philistines captured him and took him into the prison where? In Gaza. Judges 16 records that. Later, Samson regained his strength from the Lord and he pushed down the pillars of their pagan gods named Dagon in the temple. So that's where Samson pushed the two pillars of Dagon's temple. Another thing, Gaza is also associated with judgment, God's judgment. Jeremiah, Zephaniah, Zechariah, all prophesied Gaza's destruction because of the sin of the Philistines. And during the time of Samson, there were the so-called the Palestine Pentapolis, started with Gaza, Askelon, Asdod, Ekron, and Gath. They were the five cities of the Philistines. Now, Tyre and Zidon, as you can see in, in uh, Jeremiah 25, are port cities located in the present-day Lebanon. So when you look at the map today, you could see that Tyre and Sidon is in Lebanon on the Mediterranean Sea. But these are the ancient cities of Phoenicia mentioned in Old Testament. However, even Jesus Christ mentioned Tyre and Sidon of Lebanon in Luke chapter 10. In what context? In the context of the coming judgment as he was pronouncing against the cities of Chorazin, and Bethsaida during the New Testament. Ashkelon, on the other hand, is a coastal city in the southern part of present-day Israel on the shore of the Mediterranean Sea. It's just north of Gaza, 36 miles from the present-day Tel Aviv. In biblical times, Ashkelon was the oldest and the largest seaport in Canaan. Over history, Ashkelon has been ruled by the Egyptians, by the Canaanites, the Assyrians, the Greeks, the Philistines, and others. Why? Because the geographical location of Ashkelon likely led those various nations and tribes vying to control the seaport as it would have been highly desirable for trade and military staging. Also note that throughout history of Philistines, or history of Israel, Philistines were a people group, people group who hates Israel, who wanted Israel to be annihilated. They are hell-bent on destroying the Israelites. So that historically, King Sargon of Assyria conquered Gaza and destroyed it in 720 BC, and then they recovered later Alexander the Great destroyed the city in 332 BC after a lengthy battle. And during the Maccabean period, Jonathan subjugated Gaza to Israel. Now, here's my favorite part. Gaza is associated with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Recorded in Acts chapter 8, verse 26 and onwards, Gaza, once filled with hostility toward the Lord, served as a marking point for an Ethiopian eunuch to hear the good news of salvation. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to where? Gaza. So he started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Kandake, the queen of Ethiopia. On the road to Gaza, Philip comes upon this Ethiopian eunuch who is reading the messianic prophecies of Isaiah 53 about the coming death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. However, the eunuch do not understand what he was reading. So he asked Philip to explain the passage. Being filled with the Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, Philip explained and shared both the prophecies and how Jesus Christ fulfilled them on how Christ is. And in fact, Christ is the long-awaited Messiah of Israel and the whole humanity. And right there on the road to Gaza, Philip helps the Ethiopian eunuch repent 
of their sins and receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. Then he asked Philip to baptize him, and Philip does. Now, what insights can we glean from this? That not all of Hamas and Palestinian leaders and people of Gaza are wicked. Many of the Hamas and Palestinians, yes, hated and angry and enraged and wanted Israel to be erased from the map. After sharing with you the, the archaeological, the genetic study, let's answer the question from the biblical perspective, right? What do Gazans and Palestinians and Jews have in common? They are all God's creation. They are all human beings. They are a people groups with their distinct history, cultures, language, ideology, traditions, politics, economy, and belief system. All of them experience wars, foreign invaders, dispersions, migrations, displacements, being exiled, being a refugee in foreign land, being enslaved, particularly by the Assyrian empires, the Roman empires, the Greeks, and other great empires. Gazan, Palestinians, Jews, all suffered captivity, injustice, violence, pains, and many physical death. However, all of them heard God's love, and some of them experienced God's love and the gospel of Jesus Christ. They, the Gazans, the Palestinians, the Jews, including us, we are all sinners by nature. We inherited it from Adam, and we are spiritually lost. And yes, all human beings are bound for condemnation in hell apart from Jesus Christ. And yes, if Gazans and Palestinians and the Jews, including you and me, do not repent of our sins and do not turn to Christ, we will all face God's ultimate judgment. However, God does not want any Gazan, any Palestinian, any Jews, or any of us to be destroyed or to perish. But God wants us to come to repentance, to come to Jesus Christ. And because why? Because each person is destined to die once. And after this, there is the coming judgment. And some people who are now protesting about this war do not know that there is a coming great white throne judgment. However, God's love for the people of Gaza, in Palestine, in Israel, and the world, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send Jesus to condemn the world or the Gaza and the Palestinian or the Israelites, but to save the world from their sin. And yes, God sent his prophet in the Old Testament and, and the New Testament to bring them the gospel. And perhaps many Palestinians in Gaza will reject the gospel, but some won't. Some will believe and some will receive Christ as their Savior. So now the question, what and who is the remedy for Gaza and Palestinian and Israel conflict? The answer, not U.S., not Russia, not China, not even the Arab world. Jesus Christ is the only remedy. You hear me right? Jesus Christ is the only remedy for Gaza, Palestinian, the Israelite, and even the whole world. Because Jesus Christ came so that we can have everlasting life. Our life here on earth is temporary. But we have a sin problem. We have a death problem. We have a judgment problem. And we don't have the solution on our own. So that God sends the remedy in the person of Jesus Christ. So that anyone who listen, who believe and receive Jesus Christ after they repent of their sins, they will be saved and they will receive eternal life. Because only Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can go to heaven except through me. So yes, all Gazans, all Palestinians, all Jews has to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior for their eternal salvation. It may not probably be the physical salvation, but if that is your, your heart's desire, you pray this with me. Pray this from the heart. 
telling Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and in need of a Savior. I ask you to forgive of my sins, and I believe that you died on the cross to save me from my sins. And I now ask you, Lord, to be the Savior of my life, and I promise to commit my life to you. If you pray that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Because here is the assurance of your salvation, that if you repent of your sin, your sins will be forgiven. And why is that? Because only God can remove the guilt, the penalty, and the punishment of sin. And if we believe and accept Jesus Christ, we become the children of God. Not we become Palestinian or Jews or Arab. No, we become the children of God. So that when we listen to this message and believe in God, we receive eternal life. Not just humanitarian temporary help, but this is beyond our physical needs. We have been passed from physical death to eternal life. Why the promise is whoever has the Son has life, and whoever does not have the Son does not have life. There you go. The only remedy to Gazans, Palestinians, and Jews is Jesus Christ because those who belong to Christ become the new person. The old has gone, the new has come. And let me end in this. With the present Israel and Palestinian conflict, believers, followers of Christ are called to pray. We need to pray for the peace in Jerusalem, in the West Bank, in Golan Heights, in Gaza Strip, and the entire Israel. We need to pray for the release of all hostages by Hamas. And we also need to pray for the ceasefire in Gaza and even in the old Israel, in Golan Heights, on the north, bordering Lebanon and Syria. We also need to pray for healing of all the wounded and allow the humanitarian efforts inside Gaza. We also need to pray for the liberation of the slavery. We need to pray for liberation of Satan's deception from sin. We need to pray for salvation of these people, conversion to Christ and enlightenment. And yes, probably, and why? Because I strongly believe nothing is impossible with God. I believe that God is all-powerful. He can save even the murderous Hamas people and the wicked of all the wicked. Join me in praying for the release of all hostages, and ceasefire in Gaza, also the healing of the victims of this war, and the people of Gaza, that they may turn away from their hatred and give their lives to Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God bless you.